Hello and congratulations on completing your master's program. You are on your way to becoming a limited licensed professional counselor for the state of Michigan. We here at Mahaka, we are elated to have you join us. It is now an exciting time, it's such an exciting, exciting time to become a counselor in our state. What we wanted to do as a gift to you is to demystify the licensing process. So from the bridging, first of all, we want to introduce you to what's called the Bridging Initiative. And it is a um, committee, a Mahaka committee, where we have come together to help to alleviate some of the challenges that come with trying to figure out how to take your next steps to step from being a student to a professional from the academic realm and to the the um the industry of counseling so welcome again and this video is designed with you in mind to take you step by step on the licensing process um a disclaimer here this is the information that we have at the time it's the the um, best information the most accurate information that we have always 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 refer back to laura and that's going to be where we go next refer back to the state of michigan website that details um outlines everything that you will need to know as a counselor in the state of michigan from a legal perspective what our scope is what you can and cannot do what our license a license um um avails to us, allows us to um, have access to. So the state of Michigan website. So if we look here and um, you, it says licensing and regulatory affairs, Laura, right? We call it Laura. And um, this is the counseling page. This is the counseling page. You can Google this. I often Google LLPC, State of Michigan LLPC, and it basically will bring up a link that when I click on it, it says counseling and um, licensing regulatory affairs. This is the page that houses all of the information around our license. You always want to come to this page for updates. There are updates that happen very often. Well, that, that happen when they happen. Let, let's just say that. So periodically, you want to check this page to see if anything has changed. At Mahaka, we will continually send you out updates and things of that nature. However, as a independent as an autonomous person, it is also important that you as a professional look for yourself and stay on top of what's happening with the license. All right. So there are a, a, a couple of links here that are important. In another video, we will look at this page in detail. We'll go through all the links and talk about the different elements that are on this page. However, for the purposes of this, this video, it is simply about how to complete the um, your applications for licensure, how to go through that process. So you're coming to this page and then we're gonna go first to the counselor licensing guide. So if you click here, you will see um, this, this guide that appears for you. Now, the first you see eligibility for professional counselor license by examination, that is not you. And then we'll scroll on past all of that. We'll come to the next one that says, for professional license by endorsement, that is not you, <laughs> okay? And then we'll come on down to eligibility for limited professional counselor license. Aha, that's you. And so each one of these steps um, give you detail for what's required of you. You're gonna submit an application for a limited license professional counselor along with the appropriate fee. And we'll, we'll look at that a little bit more in detail. Your official transcripts, must be submitted directly to the, the, the office. I'll get, we'll, we'll point out that address to the office from the educational institution confirming receipt of your master's or doctoral degree in counseling from a qualified program or degree determined by department of consultation, so on and so forth. Okay, so you can read that for yourself, of course. Um, and so the, to highlight here, the second bullet, 
your transcripts must be sent from the school from which you graduated. And it must be the degree that's already conferred. And you can talk to your school about what that means. If you need to qualify a program, that's another, uh, another conversation. But at this point, you've already completed the program. You've already done that. Have your school to send you in your transcript. If you are from a non, uh, a not accredited by council, so if you're from a non-KCREP accredited school, it needs to include some additional coursework and training in the diagnosis, diagnosis and treatment of mental and emotional disorders and all other coursework requirements of KCREP, including practicum and internship requirements. The program must not be less than 48 semester hours or 72 quarter hours in counseling topics, okay? So if you're from a non-KCREP or credit school, you, you have to do some additional, um, it, uh, provide some additional paperwork that addresses those elements there. All right, your third bullet, a certification of counseling education form must be submitted from your educational ins institution. So this is the second item that's coming from your educational institution, your transcript, and then the counseling educational program. And then a professional disclosure statement must be submitted with your application. Each one of these items we're gonna go over in a, a little bit more detail, but I wanted to give you the, the, the broader view first. Um, and verification of license. That's only if you've had a previous license, then you will need to go through this step. Our next bullet point talks about a fingerprint report. Criminal background is required. So once your application is reviewed, you will be emailed an application confirmation letter, and it will provide you with the instructions to complete the criminal background check. And for finally, bullet talks about English language proficiency. So if you're applying for licensure, it is required that you demonstrate a working knowledge of the English language. All right. So that is that page. You don't have to be concerned with anything else on this page. You are um, going to focus on eligibility for a limited professional counselor license. All right. So that's the first element we're going to look at. Let's go back to our main page here. The next part we want to look at is the application for counselor license. Now, the address, here's the address that you are, that everything is coming to as it relates to a counselor. This is the address, okay? If you've got questions, here's your phone number to call to get help with this process. And finally, this is the web address, which is, um, if you need to send something in to them, oh, I didn't mean to do that. If you mean to send some, if you need to send something in, um, this is your email address to send it in. BLP help. Um, BLP help. Okay. All right. BLP help. Sometimes I mix that up. All right. So here we are. Here we are. The application for professional counselor license. This form should not be used for a license renewal. So this 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 initial part is self-explanatory. We've seen these kind of questions before in any kind of um, request for our personal information. So here it is. You'll fill out your personal information. Um, permanent ID, a license number. You don't have that yet. You won't have a license number until you get, until your license, your application is approved and granted. Then you'll get a license number. Until then, you leave that blank. Fill out the rest, your address, city, so on and so forth. List any aliases. Okay, here. Now, this is where, you, this is the box you're going to check here. And you're going to send in this amount, $86.45. I have no idea. Every time I look at the uh, these amounts, I it's so hilarious to me. But at any rate, this is your amount that you're going to send in. Okay. And um, just so that you know, currently, there is no ability to, um, to do it electronically. So you literally, you have to send it in to the state. Well, you see it here. You'll check a money order drawn from a U.S. financial institution 
and made payable to the state of Michigan must accompany this request. Do not send cash. And right now there is no electronic form of payment. And we'll go, and fees are non-refundable, non-refundable. So just so that you know. Professional education, so you want to fill out um, page two, the names of your, your school or schools and then the name of the degree that um, granted your, um, the name of the degree granted, okay? So name of your school and Master's of Arts in Counseling or whatever it is that your, your degree was. And if you license in any other state, this is the area where you provide that information. Good moral character questions. Now, it says if you answer yes to either of the next two questions, you must submit a written explanation as to what took place, including dates of occurrences, courts, documents, so on and so forth. So basically you wanna be really question careful with these questions. Sometimes individuals will mark no, will mark yes, not paying attention when they will really mean no. And that'll that'll get your 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 um, application um, looked at, right? And, and it says it doesn't automatically prevent you from attaining a license, but there's an evaluation process that will occur if you mark yes. So you wanna be sure that if you mark yes, that it really is yes. All right, additional documents required. All applicants, and, and we've already seen this, but upon review of your application, you will be mailed an application confirmation letter containing instructions to complete the criminal background check, right? Containing instructions to do that. So you wanna make sure that you um, do what's necessary there. Counselor by endorsement, that is not you. Counselor by exam, again, that is not you. And if we go on down, limited license, yay, that's you. So here's the area where you want to pause and be very, very um, detailed. Now, what you're going to find is we're going to go over some of the same information over and over again. Repetition, repetition is key, right? We understand that many things we only learn by doing it over and over again. So here we are um, repeating ourselves again. Official transcripts directly from the university or college. You cannot send them in yourself. If you are from a, a non-K CREP accredited, you have to do the additional elements that's spelled out here. And then there's a certification of counseling education form submitted to this office. And I'm going to go to that, that form next after we finish this pro process. A professional disclosure statement and description for that is on five. So we will park there. Verification if you have another license. All of this is just a repeat from what we looked at in the, the first document there. Re-licensure, re limited license or four, that is not you. So we can um, go past all of those components and go to page five, the professional disclosure statement. So um, you are required, this is a part of the law that we must have a professional, it says requires that a licensed counselor furnish a professional disclosure statement to all prospective clients before engaging in counseling services. So this, we expect that you already know this. This was taught in your program, I'm sure. So, and we're gonna take our time here and I'm gonna to read to you a little bit. So read along with me. A professional disclosure statement is required from every applicant, even if you are not currently practicing. Um, you must provide a separate professional disclosure statement for each practice location, you are required to submit a new professional disclosure statement to the board within 30 days if you have any changes to the required information. Your license cannot be issued without a PDS, I call it, on file. Attach a copy of your professional disclosure statement to your application for licensure. So when you submit your license, when you submit your application, to the state and you can submit that electronically. You can mail it in or you can submit it electronically to the email address that's at the top of the form. But you, 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 it, it, um, you must also submit a PDS or professional disclosure statement. Now, your professional disclosure statement must include all of the following information. It can include more, but it cannot include less. 
your name, business address, or all of this that's here, it must include that. If you're not currently employed, provi employed, provide your name, address, and telephone number as shown on your application. All right. So if you're not employed, just provide your home address. You might want to change that later, but right now you can just provide that. A description of your practice. So you're going to describe your practice. What is it like? What will individuals experience as they come? So on and so forth. And um, a description of your education and experience. You've got to provide that. A fee you charge your clients or a statement if you do not charge a fee. You've got to state what you're charging or if it's or if it's um, if you're not charging, you state that. And the following information must um the following information must be included in, in your PDS in the event your clients would like to file a complaint regarding your counseling services. This address and phone number should not be used for any other purpose. So you want to let them know um, if, if there's any reason to file a complaint, this is how they can file it. This address must be exactly as you see it listed here. This must be included. And the final element um, is if you are applying for the limited license counsel, um, counselor, limited counselor license, which you are, you must include the name and license number of the licensed professional counselor who will be supervising your 3000 hours of post degree experience. And that, that supervisor must, um, must have had training. And if you look at look at our checklist. We provided you with the checklist. Look at the checklist and you'll get the link to what that means. You'll get a link that'll take you to a document that talks about what it means. And then finally, you want to sign and date your application and that's it. Congratulations. Congratulations on completing your application for professional counselor license in the state of Michigan. Exciting stuff, right? Exciting stuff. Okay. Now let's go to the counselor. Where is it? Okay. Certification of counseling education. That's the other form that's important for you to know about. And it's the last form we're going to talk about. This is completed by your the school, the institution, the school. This form must be submitted directly to this office by your educational institution. If this form is submitted by the applicant, it will not be accepted. So you're not gonna you're not gonna complete the form, but you will follow up with your school to make sure that they have sent the form in. So uh, more than likely, your school who does a uh, and so we're not going to really go through here, but make sure that you go through and you look at it just so that you have. So these are the areas that they're making sure that were covered in your course or diagnosis, treatment of mental and emotional disorders, so on and so forth. Right. And so this is up to your school. Um, and, and that's really talking about a non-K CREP or credit. OK, so not going to do anything with this, but I just wanted you to see it so that you could know what it is that that the application was referring to, as well as the licensing guide was referring to. So in this video, we looked at the counselor licensing guide. We looked at the application for counselor license, which also showed us the fee involved, as well as the professional disclosure statement and all the elements required there. We took a quick peek at the certification of counselor education, which will be sent from your school, directly from your school, as well as your transcript will be sent directly from your school. So new graduate, almost graduate, counseling student, wherever you find yourself, um, in before you completed this process, I want to say congratulations. We at Mahaka, we are here to support you. We are designing and working and using our creative minds to, to find ways to get under you, to undergird, and to make sure that you have the best possible experience in uh, being a student, as well as bridging over. You hear that? Bridging over, pun intended, <laughs> bridging over into the industry. The Bridging Initiative is designed with you in mind to help 
to make sure that you have as seamless as, a, as possible of an experience of transitioning from the academic world into the professional world. Let us know how we might support you. Um, email us at mahakabi at gmail.com. That is M-M-H-C-A-B-I at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you watch all of the videos. There are tons of videos for you to watch. If there's something, some other way we might support you, then email us and let us know. And that's it for now.